Good afternoon in Jakarta time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to attend the plenary Indonesia's transformation into a digital economy. We are really pleased to have you here so we can uh, learn how to transform the Indonesia's economy into a digital economy. We are very honored to have uh, three panelists or speakers uh, that will share us uh, about their insights about the transforming of uh, in Indonesian economy into digital economy. The first uh, speaker will be the member of parliament, the chairperson of Commission One, Mrs. Mutia Fiada Hafid. Bu Mutia, please uh, share your thoughts with us. Okay. Uh uh, Leo, thank you very much. I would like to, first of all, thank for the invitation for this event. It's a great pleasure for me to be here uh, in this delightful event, an international webinar convened by Medcom and Horasis. So first, congratulations for Horasis and Medcom. And uh, the theme today that I was uh, uh, given is Indonesia's transformation into digital economy. And I believe this is a um, a, a very timely uh, topic because it enables us to share Indonesia's experience in digital transformation and also the urgency to transform our economy adopting digital technology. Uh, before I start uh, this screen sharing, I would uh, like also to say hello to uh, Honorable Secretary General of Ministry of Communication, Bapak Ismail. <laughs> Jan will speak on behalf of the Minister of Communication and also uh, Honorable Peter Scherer Setiawan, founder and CEO of uh, Wahyu, and also uh, Mr. Leonard Samusir as uh, the moderator for this session. So uh, we know that our world has never been so connected like today in this digital age. There is no place no that is totally uh, exempted from internet connection. As we may aware, uh, by the end of September 2020, there are almost 5 billion of internet users around the world. And uh, you can help me uh, from, from now, uh, Mr. Liu, to uh, start the screen. Uh, a part of, uh, apart from huge numbers of internet users, the digital transformation has also led to inventions of some digital technologies and Here's a look to uh, what we predict will dominate in 2021 in terms of digital technologies worldwide, which is the 5G, uh, smart home, smart city, artificial intelligence, uh, digital currency, e-learning, blockchain, industry 4.0, digital health, and augmented reality. So uh, this is uh, most probably our, uh, uh, that we predict we will see uh, in 2021. Uh, coming on to the next page, uh, we'll see the COVID-19 pandemic and the global economy uh, at the moment as the coronavirus continues uh, its march around the world. Governments have uh, turned to proven public health measures such as social distancing, um, limitation of mobility, lockdown, all aimed to physically disrupt the contagion, of course. Uh, yet doing so has severed uh, the flow of goods and people, stalled the economy around the globe, and all of these are delivering a global recession. Economic contagion is now spreading as fast as the disease itself, so that's a big challenge for, um, I think, all countries and also, uh, of course, for Indonesia. We'll have a look at the next page. Uh, to see the graphic uh, which shows the growth trends of countries into 2020, uh, namely China, the US, Singapore, South Korea, uh, Vietnam, uh, Hong Kong, and the EU. The blue bar indicates the third quarter of 2019, uh, with um, the orange bar for the second quarter of 2020, and the gray bar indicates the third quarter of 2020. The figure displays that the growth rate for all the mentioned countries in the figure were positive, but this trend changed when they entered in uh, second quarter of uh, 2020 except for China. So the spread of coronavirus that resulted to the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted to disruptions of the economy in many countries around the world. Uh, the negative trend remains as the coronavirus spread across the globe except for China which had succeeded in containing the spread since the first quarter of 2020 and Vietnam who was also able to contain the spread of the pandemic. 
So this is what we are looking at uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, as we are nearing to the end of 2020. Um, on the next page, the economic impact of COVID-19 uh, in Indonesia case, uh, Indonesia's health sector is not the only sector hit, of course, like in uh, many other countries. Uh, the impact of the pandemic is also extended to the country's economy. And though Indonesia's GDP went down in the first quarter of 2020, it remained at the positive level. However, during uh, the second quarter uh, of 2020, the country's GDP plumped down and was contracted at uh, minus 5.32% before it went up slightly at minus 3.49% during the third quarter uh, of 2020. The economy has slowed down and it has also affected the public in general, ranging from profit loss to the loss of jobs uh, at extreme cases. Indonesia's National Development Planning Agency, or BAPANAS, estimate that at least 3.5 million people lost their job due to COVID-19 pandemic, and um, uh, more might be coming. This brings uh, the country's total numbers of, of unemployment to reach more than 10 million for August uh, 2020. So the next slide will uh, um, show uh, the graphic that I was just uh, explaining. So. Uh, in second quarter of 2020, we reached the lowest um, Indonesia's GDP, but now we are uh, going up and hopefully, of course, uh, with the help of transformation in digital economy, uh, we hope that this number will surely increase uh, further and further. Okay, uh, on to the next page. Uh, we see this is not only an Indonesia case, but uh, in many countries, sectors affected by the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in household, of course, due to the pandemic and the following policies to contain the spread, such as mobility limitation policy and work from home. Many individuals were affected economically, such as in the form of reduced income and to the worst case, uh, the job loss. And also, of course, the next sector that is uh, badly hit is also the small medium enterprises. Uh, in Indonesia, the uh, small medium enterprises uh, contributes to 60% of our total economy. So uh, when the small medium enterprises is hit, uh, of course, the whole uh, economy is also affected. Pandemic has made many individuals to remain home as they are strongly suggested to stay home and several SMEs in metropolitan cities like Jakarta was also uh, uh, hit from opening their, was also exempted from opening their businesses and reduce of income and some SMEs were also not able to conduct their production as raw materials needed for the production were not available. Um, not only the small medium enterprise, but also big corporations um, have uh, been also affected by the pandemic and the policies to tackle the pandemic as raw materials and distribution were mostly disrupted due to lockdown policies taken by some countries. Corporations, sorry, corporations were also impacted with the fact that they still need to pay their employees while production and sales were reduced or even stopped. And of course, the financial sector um, also affected very much by the COVID-19 pandemic as the pandemic results volatility in financial market. Uncertainty in uh, markets and credit spreads increased risk to access capital uh, operations and profitability concerned customers and impact on demand consumer behavior and possible increase of reputational risk. Um, to the next page. With all the impact of COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia, the urgency to look for radical solution has not been uh, more important uh, than before. So uh, now digital transformation is indeed the key solution to not only accelerate the country's economic recovery, but also to boost job creation as well as to speed up the fourth industrial revolution or known as the industry 4.0. Therefore, the COVID-19 pandemic has become an impetus for Indonesia to start embracing digital transformation. So here's our uh, coordinating minister for economy um, uh, quotes that digital transformation is the accelerator for the national economic recovery, uh, job, recre job creation, as well as the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0. But not only the coordinating minister um, uh, who have said uh, that, but also our president himself has also mentioned in um, his speeches that Indonesia will, he will push Indonesia to 
to transform uh, uh, in digital or uh, digit uh, will will do a transformation in digital sector. So uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic has become a momentum to accelerate digital transformation, and we believe in that. Even also, not only the government but also uh, from the um, uh, DPR or House of Representatives, we fully support the digital transformation. And digital transformation is the prerequisite. We believe that digital transformation is the prerequisite to attain the potential of the country's digital economy by 2025. So uh, what's digital economy on the next page um, that we are talking about uh, in Indonesian perspective? Digital economy is an economy that is built upon the use and adoption of information technology and digital communication. And five technologies that have the most potential to drive digital transformation of the economy in the Southeast Asian region, namely the mobile internet, big data, internet of things, automation of knowledge, and cloud technology. So with the internet of things, of course, uh, we believe that it can be all-inclusive. It can be uh, used uh, by anybody, for anybody, uh, on any uh, device, uh, anytime, with any context, any place, anywhere, uh, any part, any network, and any service and any business. So we hope to include uh, everybody in the Internet of Things. To the next page. Uh, so th this is the current situation in Indonesia. We have 272.1 million uh, uh, in population. Uh, in 2017, we have 143 million um, uh, Internet users. and. 2020 January we have 175.4 million internet users and the government is doing uh, as much together with the parliament to increase uh, the internet users uh, within the country uh, and we have also social media penetration uh, uh, in, in a big number of 59 percent so uh, Indonesians like to spend most of their time on social media in terms of Digital economy in 2019, um, it's worth uh, 40 billion US dollars, and we have a potential of uh, 130 billion US dollars in 2025. With the current uh, situation, a digital economy contribution to the GDP only 2.9 percent, which highlights that there is still a, a very big room to grow uh, in terms of digital economy contribution to GDP in Indonesia. Um, I think the rest within the screen uh, is uh, clear enough that before the pandemic, e-commerce has been uh, flourished, but it grows even more during the pandemic. Uh, Fast-moving consumer goods is estimated to increase 400% during the pandemic, and there has also been a significant increase of demand for logistics and expedition sector since April 2020. Okay, uh, the next page... Uh, no, no, sorry, back to the, the other one, to the page before. In this digital uh, age, ICT should no longer be seen as medium for communication and transaction, but should also be seen as a source of income for the economy. And within the Southeast Asia region, Indonesia shares the biggest potential market for digital economy. During 2019, uh, Indonesia's digital economy value worth of 40 billion US dollar. Uh, a figure that was released by president himself and Google and Tomasek predict that in five years Indonesia's digital economy value will reach more than 100 uh, US billion US dollars. Um, with of course the current situation we have in, in financial technology, those are some of the um, uh, what do you call that uh, companies uh, and also on demand services, uh, internet of things, e-commerce. So if this is currently what we have. And of course, we will target more and more uh, companies to, to join uh, the fintech, the on-demand service, Internet of Things, and also e-commerce in Indonesia. Um, we'll see now on the next page, Indonesia's roadmap of digital transformation. Uh, maybe Pa Ismail from the Ministry of Communication will or can add to this um, uh, mapping uh, of roadmap for digital transformation. but. Uh, in 2020, so we are now currently uh, dealing with the basic regulations and policies. Uh, the parliament uh, has been uh, uh, working on the, uh, for example, one of the things that we're working on is also the uh, privacy law. Uh, 
to be finished uh, within next year, hopefully. And also, so 2020 until 2025, we will fix uh, and improve our regulations and policies for uh, the digital transformation. And 2025, uh, um, we also develop the talent. Even now, also, we are doing that as well. So uh, there is no use of having regulation without the digital talents. And to be honest, we are still, we still have uh, a lot of homework to do in terms of uh, producing digital talents within the country. So we are also focusing on that. And also, of course, the uh, homework of building the infrastructure and mastering technology in Indonesia is a, a vast country. Uh, it's not so easy to, you know, complete the whole uh, uh, country with the, with the best uh, infrastructure, but we are doing it now. And we are also, uh, we have done it uh, all this time, but we are trying to finish what we call Merdeka uh, Signal, which is the freedom of uh, signal for everybody in Indonesia. And hopefully until uh, 2021, we can finish all the uh, uh, infrastructure uh, within the whole Indonesia. And of course, accelerating uh, funding and incentive, uh, especially for uh, local digital platform and developing digital ecosystem as well. Okay, uh, on this page, we'll have a look at top digital economy transformation challenges that um, we also face here in Indonesia, which is the uh, internet penetration, uh, which is uh, remains low compared to our neighboring countries like Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam, uh, because we are still building our infrastructure. And together with that also, of course, we try to push down the price for uh, internet connection. Also, we still have, this is the, the, the bigger in 2019, we still have 24,000 villages, but I believe that in 2020, it already reduced to, uh, I don't know, not the part. Uh, from the Ministry of Communication will update, but I think around 30,000 uh, villages left to be connected by the internet. And also the average speed of mobile internet in Indonesia is still uh, on progress uh, because we are still lower than our um, um, friend in Malaysia, uh, Thailand, and also Vietnam and Singapore. So we will also have a, a big work uh, on that one. And only 9.5 million out of 60 million SMEs that have migrated into digital. So we are uh, also pushing the small medium enterprise to go digital. And cybersecurity issue and weak consumer data protection. Again, as I mentioned, we are still working on our uh, privacy law. And that's why it's still considered um, weak consumer data protection and inadequate, inadequate digital talent. So as uh, I mentioned before also that we are also trying to uh, catch up on uh, producing more and more digital, digital talent in Indonesia. Um, so that's the basically the uh, overview of uh, how uh, digital transformation in Indonesia is being carried out and how we planned it to be uh, happening in the near future. Uh, for now, I think that uh, should wrap up my presentation, uh, Leo. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ibu Mutia Hafid. Uh, a very uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, before we uh, jump into <coughs> discussion, I would like to continue with uh, Mr. Peter, uh, who will share us uh, his struggle, his uh, fascinating journey to how to uh, make something from nothing. Mr. Peter, please share your thoughts. Okay. Thank you, Valeria. Uh, allow me to share some screen. Yes. Um, okay, so. Okay, hopefully you can see um, the screen in front of you now. So first of all, good day, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say thank you for the opportunity. And it's such an honor for me to share about SME Digital Transformation especially in the food sector. So my name is Peter Shearer. I'm the CEO and founder of Wahyu Group, a digital startup company based in Indonesia. And we are helping uh, traditional eateries or uh, waru makan in Indonesia. If you're not familiar with waru makan or traditional eateries in Indonesia, so 
Um, in Singapore, they call it hawker. In uh, Thailand, they call it lanahan. In Japan, they call it yatai. In India, they call it daba. Um, in Indonesia, we call it warung makan. So warung is a traditional shop. Makan is it. So warung makan is traditional eateries. And yes, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, warung makan in Indonesia. So according to data that we have, there are more than three million warung in Indonesia. And so let's say thirty percent of them is in the food sector. So meaning there are one million warung makan in Indonesia. And in one day, um, and if one day they can, in one day they can serve around fifty uh, to two hundred customers. And the average spending per customer is one uh, dollar. So, so basically, warung makan is serving one dollar meal. Uh, so, meaning the total potential market size for the traditional eateries in Indonesia is around fifty to two hundred million US dollar per day. So it's a very big numbers. But but the interesting part is um, most of them is facing the same problem. So um, so three years ago I met um, this guy called Pa Amir. So he's a warung makan owner and he was sharing the problem with me. He's saying uh, the business is going nowhere, uh, which is the main reason because there's no system, no financial system, no operating system. Everything is running like super manual, no no digital system at all. So that's the reason why I create Wahyu. So we want to upgrade their label using technology. We want to make sure they're using digital system to run their business. So uh, with Wahyu, uh, the owner can achieve a business success and reach a prosperous life. Uh, we want to standardize their quality of product and services using our technology. And uh, our mission, we want they're running their business like a truly professional restaurant owner. So in one sentence, uh, if you're familiar with Gojek, Gojek Helping Ojek, we are helping warung makan or traditional eateries. Currently, we have um, around 14,000 warung makan as our partners, and we are still serving in greater Jakarta areas like Jakarta, Depok, Tangerang, Bekasi, Bogor. But hopefully, we can serve other big cities in Indonesia soon. Uh, we also give an opportunity for warung makan to run a new business like this, uh, like the ayam goreng and bebek goreng, so so they can serve new menu and get another source of income. Uh, currently, we have uh, more than 350 stalls, uh, this type of uh, ayam goreng, um, around Greater Jakarta. So to achieve the mission to digitize this SME, we, we have uh, three pillar strategies, actually. Uh, first is by using community. Second, by using our apps with killer features and rewards. Um, uh, the third one is actually uh, the most important is by educating them. So uh, let me share the strategy by using community. As we know, um, Indonesian people love to be part of the community. They love to hang out. They love to share. They love to meet other people with the same language, with the same hometown, some same job, same difficulty, and many others. So so we create a lot of programs. We, we like... Uh, gathering event we also have a communication channel like whatsapp group for the warung makan owner so the idea is to create a benchmark of a success story of warung makan that using technology so the other warung makan owner uh, they are willing to try and implement in their warung and uh, the second one is uh, by uh, through killer application so most of the warung makan need need to wake up like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning to buy raw material. Now they're just using our apps to buy raw material like rice, sugar, uh, spices, uh, fresh vegetables, and we will deliver it on the next day without any de delivery fee. And since we are serving a lot of warung makan, we can get a better price from the supplier. So so we can get a better price for, the, the, for our partners. Uh, plus, they can get a point for every purchase. And they can get a point and they, they can redeem for a product or even they can go hatch uh, uh, by using only points. So we keep updating and perfecting our apps uh, to make sure warung makan owner using our apps and um, we won't uh, solve their problem using our apps. For example, we have a ledger features. So if one customer want to do pay later for this warung makan, warung makan just put into this application and then uh, it can remind the customer to pay uh, the warung makan owner only using the WhatsApp text. So the rest and the most important is education. We believe we need to open their mindset. We need to move up their horizons. So in Wahyu, we have an academy. 
So in this academy, we teach them about financial literacy, how to serve customer better, how to run warung like a pro restaurant owner. Uh, and the most important, we teach them about uh, the digital literacy. And uh, yes, we have an on-ground relationship officer to meet them at least uh, once a week. In Wahyu, we believe that success not only about how much money that we make, but we really care and we really, uh, it's about uh, the difference or impact that we make in people's life. So as we know in Indonesia, SME are considered are the backbone of Indonesian economy. SME contribute around uh, 60% of the Indonesia, uh, of the nation's economy and absorb around 97% of the domestic workforce. Uh, but the numbers of SME that using online platform for the business still around like 10 million or still around 16% from the total market. So hopefully the number can keep growing, especially during this pandemic, everything is going online. And yeah, we, we really need support and collaboration all parties. So together we can move the nation forward. So thank you. So that's from me. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was <clears throat> Mr. Peter Shearer Setiawan, the founder and CEO of Wahyu uh, Indonesia. Uh, before <clears throat> we start with the q and I, I would I would like to continue with the Secretary General from the Minister of uh, Ministry of <laughs> Communication and Informatics, Mr. Iskandar, or should I call Dr. Iskandar? Dr. Iskandar, uh, you've heard uh, from uh, yeah, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Iskandar. We, we've learned from Ismail. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Ismail, I'm sorry. Mr. Ismail, I'm sorry. Uh, we've learned from Ibu Mutia and also Mr. Peter about uh, how to change uh, Indonesia's economy into a digital economy. Can you please uh, let us know what is the priority of uh, the government uh, in this uh, sense? the Ministry of Communication and Informatics. What is the priority to establish the digital economy uh, in Indonesia? Is it uh, the security or the availability or which one, sir? Uh, could you yeah. please tell us, Dr. Ismail? Thank you, Pak Leo, for your question. A very uh, small question, but very big, uh, I mean, to be to discuss uh, what is our priority actually to, to bring a uh, trans digital transformation in Indonesia. Uh, as you know, we are a very big country. We have a so potential uh, as an economy is very potential. But uh, we need first of all to cover all in infrastructure. So uh, the first priority of government now is cover all the people to connect to to give them. Uh, the available and quality right. of infrastructure connectivity. Uh, so that's why all right. Uh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Ismail. Uh, it is uh, very uh, pleasurable for us to have um, chairperson of Commission One uh, from uh, House of Parliament, Ibu Mutia Hafiz. But unfortunately, it's uh, been an, a pleasure to have Ibu Mutia Hafiz. Ibu Muti Hafiz should leave early uh, this session because she has uh, uh, another duty to, to, to do. Yeah, yeah. Ibu Muti Hafiz, please, if you want to uh, yes, yes. leave the session. Yeah. Uh, Leo, thank you very much for understanding. Uh, yeah. But, you know, in this uh, uh, aim for digital transformation in Indonesia, the parliament and the government has, you know, one stand. So, yeah. Mr. Ismail will be able to also answer uh, from the parliament side because we've been in contact uh, also uh, we, with our meetings with the, uh, the government to talk about this. So we are in one voice. So you can ask him also, uh, and he will he can also uh, answer it on behalf of the parliament. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's Thank it. you, Ibu Mutia. Thank you, Mas Juga. Dari Wahyu, very uh, very inspiring. <laughs> Yes, thank, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we <clears throat> are listening to uh, Dr. Ismail, and while you're uh, paying attention, we have uh, no glitch either in audio or video. It means that Dr. Ismail and the government had made uh, 
very significant progress in establishing the internet connection. And Dr. Ismail, please continue, sir. Yes, uh, we uh, we know we do uh, we do believe that uh, digital transformation, especially for economic uh, digital economy, they are need a good quality of the connectivity. So that's why government, this is like a pre-request for us to come into the digital economy uh, is a connectivity. So government will uh, very focus on this year and uh, next two years to cover all of our villages. Uh, we have around 12,500 12, villages. There is no uh, connectivity for G uh, broadband uh, connectivity. So government will start with this issue to, to cover this all villages by 2022. Uh, it's around 12,500 uh, 12, villages will be covered by the 4G infrastructure. And then uh, we uh, to, to, to overcome these problems, uh, uh, government will chip in with the national budget uh, to speed up uh, not only waiting from the operator's uh, capital expenditure, but government will will uh, involve in this issue, uh, chip in with the budget, the national budget to speed up this. And the next one, we also introduce a new policy and regulation to make the more easier to operators uh, to, to sharing uh, infrastructure, like uh, passive infrastructure sharing, active infrastructure sharing, even uh, spectrum frequency sharing. It will be implemented uh, in this year, and then uh, uh, all the operators can uh, easier to them to make uh, efficiency business uh, to to handle the the, uh, the society. And then uh, the next, uh, we also government will focus on on uh, application and data. Uh, we do understand that uh, this business is very important and need to to. Uh, to make sure that all of the data, especially uh, private data, it will be secure enough. So that's why government uh, will implement the new law. Uh, this is under process to uh, to make sure and to ensure that all data of the customers, all data of private data, uh, will be uh, protect, protected by the law and by the uh, the regulation. And then uh, we also uh, support in digital talent. Uh, as you know that uh, to cover all of uh, this uh, uh, position that uh, Indonesia needs uh, uh, quite huge of digital talent uh, as operators, as uh, makers, and also become as a user. Uh, even though for user, let's say like a uh, 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 mentioned that warung makan, they need also talent, yeah. uh, they need also uh, literacy, literacy, so how to use the, the 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 application and the digital rooms. So that's why government will focus in these three issues. First one is uh, infrastructure, the second one in data and application, and then next is digital talent. I think that is our focus uh, to speed up uh, the digital transformation in Indonesia. That is probably my, my answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ismail. Uh, I would uh, like to ask uh, both of you uh, questions, but before that, we would like to give the opportunity for the attendee for this event is uh, Mr. Richard Anthony, who has requested the mic. I will accept, accept it. Uh, so we would we would like to listen from Mr. Anthony. Are you with us, Mr. Anthony? Uh, yeah, Pak Leo. All right. Thank yes, you very sir. much for giving me the opportunity. Yeah. I actually it's not really a question. I just more to send my my gratitude and thank you for the initiative because I believe that move to digital and speed up the the process of the transformation is very important for all of us in Indonesia. Mm. Uh, one thing, though, that I may uh, would like to ask is that maybe it would be faster if we can make it, uh, you know, because the, the transition to digital is we are talking about internet access, right? Uh, most of them will depend on the cellular, yeah, right? rather than the wired internet, right? Wireless services. 
So my suggestion is that if government, this is especially the government, can come up with the rules to up the, you know, uh, allow the subscribers to easily move in from one sub one provider to another. Okay, or in many other countries, they will call it true numbers portability. Okay, that will really speed up and push our provider to provide a better customer service to their customer. Right. Nowadays, most providers actually rely on the numbers because we don't want to change our number. So that's why in terms of services, sometimes right. not really that uh, very happy. That's all about it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Richard Anthony. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Dr. Ismail, can you answer, yeah. please? Yes. In, in very brief. Thank you, Richard, for your question. Uh, I do understand that a number of community is a very important uh, policy. That, uh, so, make the people become easier to change their... Uh, their uh, I mean their uh, connectivity, uh, the cellular connectivity. But uh, nowadays, Pak Richard, uh, we are not uh, really on the the numbers uh, anymore because we are not using the application. As you know, uh, many people now their connectivity use the application like WhatsApp, uh, Telegram, whatever the names. Yeah, there are many application uh, that used by the by the people. Now, uh, not related on directly to the numbers. They can very easy to change their connectivity uh, using this application. Uh, I just to, to mention the trend yeah, because uh, in a few years ago, uh, I do I do agree that the numbers is very important because we connect with this number to make a phone call, uh, to make a, uh, send the SMS using this number. But nowadays, we are uh, not really uh, connected by these numbers. Yeah. We are more they're connected by the, the application. So uh, we put our our uh, our contact numbers in, in, in application, even in Google's, uh, our Google Mail is everything. So right, maybe right. in the trends of, uh, uh, we are very open uh, to, to discuss about this. Because uh, not uh, really to contact with the number portability, but uh, very easy to contact with the application. Uh, voice over data, application over data, you form the application. So I think uh, this is uh, my, quest, my, my answer, in my opinion. Right. Thank, right. You. Thank you. Thank you, Pai. Pai. This is my, this is my question, question. Uh, because we still have uh, two and a half minutes. I would, I would like to ask Mr. Peter, what yeah. is your... Um, uh, very concrete in short term hope that uh, can be helped by uh, by smile and also other stakeholders to really uh, transform Indonesia's economy into digital economy Pak Peter, yeah yeah thanks for the opportunity but I, I think uh, what what uh, what we are really want in in terms of the the, the startup players uh, that helping the enemy I think it's already uh, mentioned by uh, uh, Ismail that that we we are really wanna have a very uh, a strong connection that you already mentioned that you wanna build a, a, a good infrastructures and then uh, the, the, the digital talent is it, it's a must in in this era, technology era so we really wanna support in the in the talents how we can bring in all the talents the the tech talent in Indonesia and and the third one of course uh, we need an af affordable price for for consume the technology uh, and even for the SME. So those three, but thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Uh, maybe this is a ver the very last question. Uh, please, Dr. Ismail, answer in very short uh, answer. It's yeah. came from Mr. Milan. Indonesia is a unique country made up of 1,000 islands. Yeah, actually, it's uh, more than 17,000 islands. What are your major challenges to join them? Uh, to join them? all up into a one digital nation. What is the biggest challenge, Pai Ismail? Yes, the biggest challenge is how to connect this uh, uh, huge uh, millions of, uh, I mean, uh, thousands of uh, islands uh, using this uh, technology. So that's why we are not focused only for terrestrial connectivity, but we cover with the satellite services. 
we uh, also uh, in, uh, will be launched the new uh, very huge satellite, high throughput satellite. Will be connected around uh, 150,000 of the way. I mean, uh, nodes will be connected by this uh, uh, the satellite services. So we will cover by the all of the technology, terrestrial, cellular, uh, fixed broadband, and then satellite will be covered for all to meet, uh, to give the connectivity and good quality for Indonesia. Thank you, Valen. All right, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very uh, enlightening uh, discussions we have now. Uh, we would like uh, to say sorry for those uh, of you who had uh, commented and also asked, but we cannot answer now. And this concludes this session. Uh, I would like to, uh, on behalf of the Committee on Media Group News, to say thank you very much for Dr. Ismail, the Secretary General of Ministry of Communication and Informatics. And we would like to say thank you to Peter, the CEO and founder of Wahyu Indonesia. And the previous ones, we would like to also thank you to the chairperson of Commission One of House of Representatives, Ibu Mutia Hafid. And that's uh, conclude our discussion uh, this afternoon. I uh, am Leonard Samosir. So thank you uh, all, and we will see you in the next uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.